Um, today I was just asked to do a, a review of sort of the northwest um, direct heading of Kanoa. Um, this year we did have quite an increased adoption of, of direct heading. Um, guys have been doing in the past, but this year, um, from, from some farm and survey, 39% of canola was, was direct headed, um, and 84% of them had a crack at it in some capacity. Um, majority of canola crops were left um, to rot and naturally rather than desiccate. Um, the reasons blokes did it, we had a low rainfall year, um, resulted in some pretty light crops, um, probably, probably worried about um, bleeding small windrows and um, vulnerable to wind and getting strewn across the paddock. Um, paddocks weren't ready to windrow due to um, when the windrow was in the, in the area in the paddock or in the paddock next door, um, due to patchy germination, soil type variability, um, cost saving, which I'll, I'll touch on a little later, but then other, a few other reasons where they had the equipment. Their neighbour did last year and, and to see how it fitted in their, their system. Uh, shattering was definitely the major concern most guys had pre-direct heading, um, whether that be wind or harvest shatter. Um, there was attempts made to, to decrease shatter, whether it be timing, getting in there when it was ready, um, seemed to it visually, it, it seemed to shatter a lot more the drier it was. Um, having your real position um, back and high and, and set to ground speed seemed to tickle it in rather than um, beating into it. Um, and having Having your speed so you had a steady flow of plants coming coming through the plants seemed to be able to brace each other a bit more on the night. Um, on reflection though, and as guys got into it, uh, um, and it's not, not, not a recommendation in any way, but um, from the farmer survey, um, folks started to realise there was probably no yield difference between their direct headed and their windrow stuff. Um, some actually suggested that they were getting higher yields in their, in their direct headed stuff. Um, oh, and the general consensus seemed to be, even though there, there looked to be some visual shatter on the front, that a lot of that um, separation so still still gets caught in the draper and still gets harvested. Um, just to, uh, it was difficult to get great side by side comparisons as it was usually done on a paddock scale or, or better stuff was wind road and lighter stuff was direct headed. Um, but here's one here, like getting down to the cost scenario where we had a, we had a pretty, pretty low rainfall year. I think we had 100 mil of growing season rainfall over this paddock. And um, it's direct heading it incorrect, like that, that cost difference, of the only real cost difference there being that $30 a hectare wind roll, um, in, in, ended up with a 50% um, increase in gross margin. Most scores in a high rainfall environment will probably probably laugh at, at those those figures we got out of canola last year, but um, yeah, I think direct heading probably had a better fit there be, because of that. Um, shatter tolerance um, at 550 kilos of canola, um, they could effectively afford to lose uh, 54 kilos of canola before they before they were at that level of or cost of, of wind rowing, which, which worked out to be about 1,100 seeds a square metre. It's pretty difficult to make those assessments. It's, it's hard, those canola seeds are find the best of time, but that's a fair bit of canola seed in the ground. Um, and like John said before, it, and it was a, a, a few guys did make the comment that they were getting cleaner soft um, samples with less impurities in the purities with their direct headed canola. Um, speed is quite variable when it comes to direct heading. I'm de de dependent on your, your, your the thickness of your crop um, and and your header front. Um, fr front modification definitely helped. A lot of guys put cross augers on it, whether they be manufacturer ones or, or local engineers um, made ones. Um, and that, that, those cross augers definitely definitely helped to stop falling up and flowing over the back of the header and, and help maintain such so poor momentum. Um, Tried to put it, it varied between guys, sort of tried to put a bit of an average speed up there of, or a max speed up there of guys were sort of doing and sort of tried to extrapolate that out if they could main, maintain those speeds. Uh, the main issue with it was having to wait. A lot of guys getting itchy feet to get going as they're seeing their neighbours go. And, um, it's about that 10 day period, 10 days to two weeks um, between picking up your windrows and, 
and um, or that's what we found. Heavier crops may may take longer. Be nice to find out. Um, Cotton and Ewe to harvest um, due to the soil type and and difference in um, germination. Um, it often meant that they could sort of get going. Um, the cross auger did seem to help guys get um, get through a couple more hours in the day too. Well, probably one thing I didn't mention. Um, and many may have to go swap crops, but didn't really worry them at the time as the other crops that were ready at the same time, which is the next point, um, probably had higher growth margins being bale anyway. So there was there was plenty of canola that got direct headed last even after the wheat. Uh, every every year is definitely different, but and I think we'll sort of cross the bridge when we come to it. And, but I think if we have heavier crops, it, it may change the scenario. But I think now many farmers have the experience and capacity, and it's a bit of a mindset thing. I think of um, now they're probably realising they're not always dependent on someone else to get their crop off. Um, 100% of farmers I surveyed said that they, um, they that direct headed, said they'd do it again. Um, they won't, won't replace wind rowing as a, yeah, overall, I think farmers especially that have big acres of canola want to get started in, into harvest. And guys that did direct head canola, I think it was about 500 or 600 hectares was the most canola they had. Guys that were up around a couple of thousand hectares, um, yeah, definitely, definitely couldn't direct head at all, they, they thought. I think in the instance of light crops where that cost saving can make a massive difference in their take home at the end of the day. Um, Blacks will do a bit of both. Um, small plantings, many in the district this year are probably a bit disheartened with canola and with the, the dry summer we've had so far. Blokes are still probably weighing up whether how much they're going to put in, so <laughs> with on small plantings I think guys will be more likely to put a bit, um, do a bit more direct heading. And, um, and when now I know if I go into a paddock, I think if it's past the point of wind rowing, I definitely won't be too scared to say, just say, guys, let's, let's have a crack at direct heading this one.